nobody is, is, is wise by chance. Nobody is smart by chance. You don't just wake up one day and you're like, obviously like, oh, I'm smart. You might have uh, greater natural abilities towards being smart than other people. But the only way that you actually become intelligent, meaning that you know a bunch of stuff, is to, is to study and to practice the, the skills. In other words, how is it you can understand yourself? Well, one of the ways is we can start to understand other people. And none of us understand other people just by chance. You don't just wake up one day and go, oh, I know why they are the way they are. If you're really fast with being able to, to explain those things, either you have a lot of experience thinking about it. I mean, like, like, like hundreds of hours of thinking about it, not just like a couple seconds here and there. And, or you're just really good, you're, you're fast with reading people because you're just populating the unknown with your imagination. Why do people hold the views that they hold? Well, they're just stupid, or because, or they're, or they're racist, or they're just haters, or they're just, or they're just, or they're just. There is no just. One of the worst words that we can have in our vocabulary is just, because almost nothing is just anything. Finding the problems in life—that's not really hard. Any, any sixth grader can can do that. But finding the solutions in life and finding the beauty in life, those are the the real hallmarks of a deep intellect. We, we struggle a lot to, to, to just try to understand people because there's almost this sense that if we understand people, that somehow we excuse them and we kind of get over their behavior. But just because you understand why a person does what they do doesn't mean that you, that you are therefore accepting or tolerant of it. Everybody does things for, for, for reasons. We tend to, oftentimes if we don't know the reason, of course, we, we populate the unknown with our imagination. And very often the things that we imagine are the worst possible motives. Why is it that a person, um, I don't know, why is it a person won't like you? Well, we just kind of fill in the blank with our imagination. The thing, the truth is, is that they might have very good reasons for not liking you. They might have very bad reasons for not liking you. It's worth finding out why it is that a person doesn't like you, if it matters. But I suppose we wouldn't be having a conversation about it ever if it didn't matter. The reason that people hold the views that they have, the reason that people are the way that they are, it's a really good idea to figure out why people are the way that they are. Not just so that you can understand them, but also so that you can understand yourself because the same kinds of things that shape other people tend to also shape us we tend to put ourselves outside of that. Like um, other people are the way they are because they're they're stupid or they're 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 in they're, um, they're they don't care about other people. They're inconsiderate, or because they you know they're they're uneducated. They just don't know. Well, how why why are we the way that we are? Oh, because I'm completely the opposite. I'm caring because I take the time to find out. Are you really though? More so than than other people. Maybe by the way, but. You aren't that way by chance. It's like nobody is, is, is wise by chance. Nobody is smart by chance. You don't just wake up one day and you're like, all of a sudden like, oh, I'm smart. You might have a greater natural abilities towards being smart than other people. But the only way that you actually become intelligent, meaning that you know a bunch of stuff, is to, is to study and to practice the, the skills. In other words, how is it you can understand yourself? Well, one of the ways is we can start to understand other people. And none of us understand other people just by chance. You don't just wake up one day and go, oh, I know why they are the way they are. If you're really fast with being able to, to explain those things, either you have a lot of experience thinking about it. I mean, like, like, like hundreds of hours of thinking about it, not just like a couple seconds here and there. And, or you're just really good, you're, you're fast with reading people because you're just populating the unknown with your imagination. Why do people hold the views that they hold? Well, they're just stupid. Or because, or they're, or they're racist, or they're just haters, or they're just, or they're just, or they're just. There is no just. One of the worst words that we can have in our vocabulary is just, because almost nothing is just anything. It's, I mean, whatever comes after the word just, it's usually bullshit. It's just like whatever comes after the phrase "all you have to do is," is usually bullshit. Also, not always, but usually, because if things were that simple. Most of the time, we would be doing it already. But we're, we, are, we do look for fast solutions. Why is it that people are the way that they are? Well, I could understand them as being a complex individual with a, with a unique set of experiences and interpretations, or I could just call them a name. And then that kind of eliminates the whole, 
need to, to think deeply about why people are the way they are. Because if you think deeply about the way that, uh, about why people are the way that they are, then we might understand them. And if we understand them, then my goodness, if they're, they might not be as terrible as we, as we initially thought. By the way, they might be worse than we initially thought, but they also might not be as bad as we initially thought. But that takes a lot of work. And if you think about where it is that we would oftentimes rather put our, our mental energies, a lot of times we'd rather just put our mental energies into things like, I don't know, entertainment or talking to, pe talking to people who we, you know, who we immediately get along with. But some of the best people that you'll ever have in your life are going to be really complex individuals who at first you didn't understand them. Maybe at first you didn't even like them. Like, is Oscar Wilde who said that, that women will call each other many things before they finally call one another sister. In other words, some of our best friends come out of these, out of fights or disagreements or arguments that we have with people. I don't know if this has happened to you yet, but I'm thinking of somebody, a friend of mine, his name is Roz. Um, I knew the guy for a couple of years. We trained at the same place, and I was convinced this guy just hated my guts. Um, turns out he was convinced I hated his guts. And one day we were standing around and he said something to me, very kind, and it blew me away. I was like, well, I didn't expect that from Roz. And we'd never like, you know, it'd never been like overt. And then I ended up telling somebody, that was weird. I thought Roz really hated my guts. And he's like, no, dude, Roz speaks very highly of you. He just doesn't understand why you don't like him. I'm like, I don't have a problem with Roz, what are you talking about? And so today me and Roz, we're, we're, we're really close. And then it was like maybe a year, year and a half ago or so that this happened where we were talking, I was like, dude, I went to him and said, I thought you hated my guts. He's like, I thought you hated me. No, dude, and you know, we get along fantastically well. And he's a really complex individual. He just has one of those faces where he always looks angry. And I, I, I imagine I have a face like that too. I have people who come in, like it was last Friday. So many people ask me, what's wrong, Scale? Nothing wrong. I was just focused on working on something and people just thought I was angry. There's, I guess I just have that face. Um, but you'll find that some of the best, like treasure very often times, uh, treasure very rarely is just sitting on the beach somewhere. You usually have to go finding it, go looking for it. All the, all the simple stuff's already been picked up. Um, and people are like this too. To understand why people are the way they are, oftentimes is to, is to come to admire them, it's to come to like them, to come to see ourselves in them. And of course, some of the people who we hate the most are gonna be the people who remind us of ourselves but some of the people who are, we're going to derive the most benefit from are going to be people who are not like ourselves because we get to experience a world that, that we would never experience otherwise, which is to say we experience it through their eyes, through their experiences, through their perspectives. Some of the best ways that you can come to, to develop yourself is to listen to your enemies, not even just your friends, because your enemies, you know, a true friend is going to stab you in the front. Your enemies will st stab you in the back. But once in a while, it's worth figuring out, why, don't, why, don't, why do people, like, why would this person not like me? And if you find out from them why they don't like you, they might reveal something about you that your friends would never tell you. Maybe your friends like you too much to tell you that there's some annoying thing about yourself. Like one of the, um, I go back and when I, when I upload these videos, um, I cringe a lot because I find that there are phrases that I say over and over and over again. I would never notice it because I just say them by nature. For example, I say things like, things like, or I say things like all of these kinds of things. Um, I find out that I stutter way more than I realize in real time. But what got me thinking about it even more was I had a student who mentioned it to me. He said, you stutter a lot. I'm like, that's great. Why did it mention that to me? Or he was saying that I would repeat phrases a lot, especially if I was talking really fast, which means that I was in a hurry to get a point across, which means you rely on your old cliches, kind of like your own speech pattern. I would never have noticed it about myself, even listening to the video sometimes, unless somebody pointed it out to me. And so sometimes people can point out things about you that you know friends would never say it because they accept you the way that you are, or because, well, that doesn't mean they celebrate you for the way that you are, they just accept you for the way that you are. Or some people will not want to say anything to you because they don't want to cause problems, we'll say. They don't want to point out those negative aspects about you that you know maybe you would like someone to point out to you and sometimes people don't like you because they're jealous and because they just hate themselves and but
but you won't know that until you find out why it is that people feel the way that they feel. Now, your your enemies probably won't be can do uh, probably won't be open to sitting and talking with you, and and explaining to you why they they don't like you. But it's a good thing to maybe look at yourself and examine yourself and figure out why wouldn't this person like me? Because they have a reason for it. They probably didn't just wake up in the morning and say, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna not like." this person. I'm going to find something to, to, to nitpick at. You know, and sometimes, like I said, it's really just, I don't remember if I was telling you guys this, but one of my students last year was telling me that she was walking down the hallway after lunch and she was with a friend of hers and he asked her where she was going. So she said, oh, I, have, I have Scallon's class. And her friend, who wasn't a student of mine, said, oh, I, I hate that guy. And she was like, why? He said, wasn't even my student. He didn't know nothing about me. And he just says, I don't know, it's just can't stand his face. There's something about his face I don't like. Okay. All right. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, I guess so. Because there's, sometimes there's just something and you can't explain what it is. I don't know. What am I going to do? Go to the guy and say, hey, stop hitting me because of my face. No. If I had a choice, I certainly wouldn't have chosen this face if I had a choice of faces. But sometimes you're going to find out that people don't like you because of seemingly irrational reasons. Now, what is it about my face? Oh, I bet if I sat with him and with this person and had a conversation, got a chance to ask a bunch of questions, I could probably get down to the bottom of what it is about my face. I think I probably would know what it is without even talking to him. It'd be interesting to be able to confirm that. But sometimes people will like you, will, will hate you for stuff like that. And by the way, we'll, we'll get upset about that, but you realize that some people like you only because of your face. That's hap that happens also. And so figure out why it is that people are the way that they are. He says here, pain and suffering are always inevitable. It's going to happen for a large intelligence. Why? Well, because the smarter you are, the deeper you think about things. The deeper you think about things, the deeper you take things. And the deeper you take things, well, you start to get to the, to the root of, of a lot of suffering. And, not, and again, it doesn't have to be that you only investigate suffering. I know that we, we talk about it a lot in this class, but there, there's a reason for it. And if, you took, if, you, if I see you again in 12th grade, you'll maybe see the reasoning behind it. But he says here it's, a, it's, a, it's, an, it's inevitable for a large intelligence and a deep heart. So to feel deeply is also to see the suffering in things. And it's not just because everything is terrible, but it's just that you see the terrible things of it, which, by the way, finding the problems in life, that's not really hard. Any, any sixth grader can, can do that. But finding the solutions in life and finding the beauty in life, those are the the real hallmarks of a deep intellect. Anybody can criticize. Anybody can talk about how, how messed up things are. Anybody can see the problems in life because they're so obvious. But finding the solutions and finding the, the reasons for the solutions, in other words, the reason to pursue a solution, that's hard a lot of times. And so, it's interesting that when it's plain to point out that he equates greatness with suffering, that you can't become great without suffering. And that's probably a truth because the way that you become stronger, the way that you become greater is by overcoming. Now you can become not so great through suffering as well. In other words, as Friedrich Nietzsche said, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. And when he says that, he's referring to himself. He uses those pronouns, me, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. It isn't true that what doesn't kill most people makes most people stronger. Most people get, get, heart, uh, they get hurt by things, they get injured by things, and they don't become great. They become jaded, they become full of contempt, they, they get angry, and they take their anger and their rage out on the world around them. Somebody hurt me, so therefore I'm gonna hurt the world. That doesn't make you stronger. It certainly doesn't make you stronger. It makes you weaker in every measurement. It makes you weaker in accomplishment and weaker in character. And yet this is our reaction so often. I got heartbroken, so therefore I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break other people's hearts. I got treated like this, therefore I'm going to act like that. And that's that cycle, man. That's, but a deep intellect will understand why it is that people have hurt you. And you'll feel for them. Not because you excuse it. Not because it's okay for them to have done that. But you understand that, that hurt people hurt things. And if you only remember one thing I ever teach you, I, I hope it's this, that, it, that the demons of your life, they inhabit wounds. 
Your demons will inhabit wounds. In other words, the things that come to harm you and the things that come to haunt you, they come out of your wounds. In other words, the things that hurt you. And you can choose to be made stronger by that, or you can be, I don't know, possessed by demons. It's immaturity. It's immaturity. Like a two-year-old, you ever see a, a two-year-old get angry? If not, you've never been around a two-year-old. Two-year-olds get angry over the weirdest stuff. You won't let a two-year-old comes over with a handful of dirt and you stop them from eating it. And they get angry because they want to eat the dirt. And if you get near that two-year-old, the two-year-old's gonna react in such a way that they just get angry at everybody around them and they start to lash out. Can you imagine if you took a two-year-old and put them in, a, in, a, in an adult's body, how they would behave? And I'm glad that little kids are little because they can't act out on the terrible things they want to do to the world. But this is the problem is that some people, as they get older, they never grow out of that mindset. And so it's an inability to see outside of themselves. So a little kid, the reason that they, that they act the way they act is because they're little narcissists running around. They don't have the capacity yet to say, you know what? I shouldn't cry right now. My mom's had a long day. She's been at work all day. And I appreciate that, that, that she provides all of this. And my dad's had a hard day. And you know what? I should, I should just not scream and cry because I want to eat this handful of dirt. Maybe they know something I don't know. Two-year-olds don't think like that. They only think of themselves and their immediate desires and needs. And so when we get hard, we revert back to that. I hope that sounds familiar to some of you first semester. We read an article that talked about that. You can tell when a person was, was initially traumatized by how they behave when they're traumatized. So if you're like 15 years old and you get, you get heartbroken, so you decide I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break the heart of the world, you start acting like a, like a three-year-old, what what's happening is you're reverting back to some childhood trauma that you experienced back then. And when did that trauma happen? Probably when you were three. That's why you're acting like a three-year-old. Did it happen when you were a seven-year-old? Then you're acting like a seven-year-old, probably. People revert back to the age that they were when they were, when they were initially traumatized and injured. And this is why people will start to behave really immaturely. Now, if you, can, if you have the ability to stop yourself and realize, hmm, it's not a good thing to, 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 to visit pain and suffering onto the world because one person harms you, so now, therefore I'm gonna harm everybody else and the person who you harm, by the way, is very rarely ever the person who actually harms you. So that tells you that the people you're harming are just kind of like avatars, the replacements, surrogates of the person who actually harmed you. And so you have to be able to, to step back and realize it and say, this person who harmed me, they did what they did, they had reasons for it. Doesn't mean you excuse it, doesn't mean you, you, you say it's okay. But it does say, well, you understand why they are the way that they are. And the whole purpose behind understanding that is so that you can understand yourself so that you don't do that and behave worse. Because now that person, not only have they harmed you, but they've also made you a worse person now. And it's not, and, and, we, and we have this thing of, that's one of those things I say a lot. We have this thing of, we have this tendency to, to reflect that behavior that somebody visited upon us and then excuse it and just be like, well, I was hurt. Well, why do you think the other person did it? Now, we also don't want to say, well, I'm going to do the opposite of what they did. Well, you don't want to do that either because now, again, you're, you're allowing that person to determine how it is that you live. It's worth thinking about why we are the way that we are, why other people are the way that they are, so that we have the ability and the power to shape our own lives. Because if you don't shape your own life, your own life is not your own life. It's the life that somebody else is creating for you through their actions on you. You're just basically, at that point, a bundle of chemicals walking around in the universe that are they're reacting to external stimuli. But you're so much more than just that. A lot of people just don't realize that they're more than that, though. And that's why we react that way. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques?